Titans were hurriedly shipped from the United States. The tanks were received at Taegu. The Korean War, now correctly dubbed the Forgotten War, was an important, relatively recent conflict in history that saw the final major service of some of the most iconic and famous tanks made. With today's video's content, I'll be practicing and experimenting with three of the main armoured beasts from this theatre to see what sort of methods I prefer and how the end results come up. Before going too far, these tanks won't be done to an exact historical or real representation. To establish the goal, I'll be mainly messing around with heavy mud on all three, different airbrush settings and mixes across the board, different paints to see the end results, decal adhesives, and lastly, reactions to the lack of undercoats and surface preps. And a quick note on the chaffy before going too far in, is that originally I planned to mask it up and paint the face to match the easy end pattern, but halfway through masking I stopped, and this was solely due to how much I liked the drab job so far, so she'll be getting done without it. The beginning step was fiddling with the olive drab on all three, using Life Colors Contrast and Desaturation set. Starting with the chaffy, I stuck a slightly thicker mixture of paint and thinners than the other two, with the Sherman being the middle ground of the trio, which ended with the chaffy coming up very nicely I have to say. Which I'm not usually that happy with paintwork, as I more prefer the building with models. Leaving the Sherman in a bit of an okay state, and I'm glad that I stuck with its face paint, as it really popped when that was applied. As for the pattern, it just sort of landed in decent but not too fancy territory, coming more alive as the Stripes and Experimental Games Workshop shade was added, and as you'll see later on, the turret turned out darker than intended, which doesn't really match the whole tank, but I can live with it, as seeing the finished result seems to be pretty nice. Stepping back into the Easy 8 as you'll see, I freehanded basically all of the yellow tiger pelt and it's not as defined as the real one is looking at how it's represented in photos. So a couple things here. A, I should have masked it, and B, I should have tried the different, more accurate airbrush nozzles here. I'm not overly fussed that it's a bit blobby, but when I attempted to airbrush the stripes on the side, it looked god awful. By my own faults, so I gave it a quick scrape and a clean to give it another crack at with a handbrush, like I did with the pattern. To touch on the shading for the Aiden Patton's Yellow, a simple hint of Citadel's Seraphim Sapia thinned down with AK's thinners was used on a fan setting and given a couple days to dry out, giving it the look you'll see in the end result. Looking at the stripes for the pattern in Tacom's manual, there's a few inconsistencies it seems when looking at the different angles and how the stripes are shown, unless I'm interpreting it incorrectly. So they were done vaguely to the manual's styling by hand, with a mix of AK Interactive's Black and Abaddon Black by Citadel Paint, along with the Easy Zone stripes factored into this. For the brown on the Easy's Tiger stripes, I mixed Citadel's Scrag Brown and AK's Rock Bron with a touch more thinners, and while I was mixing, I mixed up Citadel's White Scar and AK's White for the pattern, and ultimately, I was fairly rough and loose with these stripes so that they looked like they were field applied by the soldiers. While I think of it, the more keen eyed of you will notice that the Easy's tow cable is shorter than intended, and this was due to the manual stating the wrong length of measurement, but that's alright. I made it work. Sort of. One thing I previously did that I liked the look of, was the rusting on the Pershing I did a while ago, where every little spot had a hint of rusting, so that was applied to all three of these tanks using a light rust wash from AK Interactive, and had Seraphim Sapia placed randomly over the top to sort of mimic a rust bleed effect. Heading back on over to the Chaffee, I brought out the old Tamiya Weathering Master Sets, which would see use across the board with these tanks, but mainly set E for the yellow to add more of a worn look to the M24's paint, before clear coating with Dulux's matte spray to lock in and reduce the amount. And this was done so it would look more like a natural bleach sun effect. Continuing on with the set E, all of the swags, bags and satchels were coated with Olive Drab by Tamiya in the TS spray range, and were hit with a thick coat of Citadel's Nuln Oil, before sponge brushing on green over the top, for a little more wear, and finally had Scrag Brown for the carry handles, ending with a coat of Reichland Flesh Shade. 
On the topic of the smaller bits and pieces, all of the deck tools and the like were done with Citadel's lead belcher for the metals on the pickaxes, shovels, sledges, and other miscellaneous deck tools, while the wooden handles were done with Zandri dust with a finishing wood wash from AK. The metals were done with a simple touch of null oil before various metal polishes and dark steel were applied across the board. Finally, the muddy effect was simply done with damp earth as a base on the pattern, with the mud pigment being added in while it was still drying. And as for the M24 and Easy, these two had AK's pigment fixer applied, with the Easy's tracks being bare as a test, before the mud pigment was applied here. Interestingly, this didn't really affect the outcome, as all three tanks got the same look, and I got what I was looking for out of them. All in all, I'm content with the outcome, and I hope you guys are too. So for now, I'll chime out until the end and let you guys see the process.
I'm still not that great at photography, so I'll need to have some good practice with the camera at some point. And as for upcoming builds, I won't be doing any more 35th stuff until I knock out some of the backlog items, as my storage shelf for these in-progress bits is, well, overloaded. It was quite fun doing these three together, but in the future I don't think I'll be doing this many in one go. So maybe every blue moon. Other than that, I hope you guys liked this little experiment, and until the next one, take it easy.